And let's go ahead and create a couple abstract methods here. So abstract methods, so let me first write them out before I explain them. So public abstract void tick public abstract void render graphics g public abstract rectangle rec rectangle get bounds and let's go ahead and import these so hover over them and go ahead and click import. And so what abstract classes are, or I mean abstract methods are, um, to explain them real quick. So these are methods that are not going to be defined um, within the abstract class. And it's up to the extending class. So in our case, the player class is going to extend the scheme object, so it will be up to the player class to define what the tick method does um, and these other abstract methods do. Now, tick is going to be our update function, so any positional updates, any game state updates, that will be done in the tick method. The render method is going to hold all the graphic updates. So um, anything that ends up getting displayed on the screen or any animations or anything like that. And then this get bounds method is going to define the bounding box for our game object. And we'll get into that a little bit more in another episode when we start talking about collision and collision detection. Um, but for now, you can think of it as just a, a bounding box um, for our object. That will be used for collision detection. All right, so the next thing we want to implement is the apply gravity function. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's type in public void apply gravity. And so each of our game objects is going to be affected by gravity. And so we want to write this function in the game object class. And in here it's very simple. All we do is velocity y plus equals 0 0.5. Um, and we'll specify that it's a float. And so we're just going to be increasing the velocity. So um, how fast the object moves by some some constant value. Um, so the first take is going to be 0, then it's going to be 0 0.5, then it's going to be 1, 1 1.5, and on and on. And feel free to play around with this value. You can also use a different gravity function um, if you feel that this one doesn't work or doesn't doesn't look correct but for the purposes of this tutorial we'll be using this function and after that we'll be creating a bunch of getter and setter methods so let's go ahead and do that so let's start with the x values so public void set x float x and in here, let's do this dot x is equal to x. And let's just add some spaces down here. And let's create a getter for, or a setter for y now. So public void set y float y. This dot y is equal to y. And let's do a setter for the ID now, so public void set ID object ID ID and we'll do this dot ID equals ID and then we'll do public void 
set velocity x is equal to float velocity x. This dot velocity x is equal to velocity x. We do one for y, velocity y now, so set velocity y, float velocity y. This dot velocity y is equal to velocity y. Next, we'll do the width. So public void set width, float width, and we'll do this dot width is equal to width dot scale, and we'll do public void set height, float height, this dot height is equal to height times scale, and then now we'll create getter methods for each of these instance variables. So let's go ahead and do that. So public float get x return x public float get y return y public object id get id return id public float get velocity x return velocity x public float get velocity y return velocity y public float get width return width public float get height return height okay so and let's go ahead and delete these so now we have all these getter methods and setter methods for our game object and so we can set values and get the values even though they are um, initialized as private um, private variables and so that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over in this video. Um, we can just run run the application real quick. You'll see that nothing changes because all we did was we created this abstract class. But once we start extending it and creating our player class and our enemies, you'll see some things appear on the screen. Um, but at least we know that there's no errors when we try to build it and run it. So with that, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you learned a lot. Please like and subscribe this video. Um, let's try to get a hundred likes on this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to add them in the comment section below and I'll try to um, get to each and every one of those. So yeah, um, thanks for tuning in today and uh, I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode.